Hello again, this is a follow up to part one where we deal with the instance generator and time offsetting using simple position, rotation and scale animations. With part two we'll be looking at how we can use these time offsets with morphs and MDDs. But I warn you now, this may not be for everyone, it's a total cheat. So what's the point to all of this you might ask? Well currently time offsetting in the instance generator with animated displacements and MDDs aren't possible. The concept for this however is very simple. I'm basically going to treat each layer as though it were a single frame and then use their scale in layout to turn the visibility on and off. Now that will then allow us to use time offsets in the instance generator. This first example I'll be mixing morphs and layers together. Our first layer is going to be this crown as I've called it. Now this crown has a morph on it which looks like that. This will be our second frame. Then we'll move on to splash one, two and three. Everything's loaded into layout. Let's sort our frames out first. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to sequence mode so I know everything is flowing in the right order. Let's duplicate the crown layer and get the morph on it. So let's move that into frame two position. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. P for properties. Let's get the morph mixer on it and turn that up to 100%. Okay, so now we have frame one, frame two, three, four, and five. We're gonna batch scale these, select them all. At frame zero, we want a scale of zero, and we also want zero scale on frame two. But on frame one, we want them to be at scale of one. Okay, so that's good. So now they're all scaling like this. And we're also gonna add a scale of zero on frame 20. With them all selected, let's press F2 to get up the graph editor. Let's filter down the scales. Select those. Select them all and make them stepped. And the only last thing to do is on the post behavior is set that to repeat. So if you wanted a quicker loop, just reduce that number or obviously make it longer for a longer loop. The next step we'll do manually as there's only five frames here. So let's extend out the dope sheet. Selecting in this column will select all of the keyframes. So uh, shift, hold down, let's just move it one frame. So now we have a simple loop. I told you it was a cheat. Right, so the next step, let's select all of these layers and group them under a single null. LW underscore create group. Let's just call it splash. Just to be clear what's going on here, these are all static layers. There's no animation on them whatsoever, with the exception of the scale, which is just used to turn them on and off, basically. And make sure your scales look nice and uniform like this, and you don't have any random keyframes added that might offset the loop further down the timeline. Let's shrink this down. I'm gonna create a new null now called instance is. Let's try a slightly different technique here. Zoom out a bit. I'm gonna turn off these from preview and the render. Okay, select the instances. I'm gonna add an emitter to this. I'm gonna make it flat. Okay, so I'm not using particles to actually trigger this animation, it's purely for placement. So let's say we're happy with the particles, let's set up the instances. Over in the instance tab, let's add an instance generator. As in part one, we're gonna to go to add object and go to the splashes. We're gonna tick on the little hierarchy button here. And item type, we're gonna select the particles. So as you can see, they're all nicely placed, all looping away. Now we just need to introduce a bit of time offsetting now. So as before, back in the instance generator, let's select the splash, let's go over to the time offset. Let's stick with the good old turbulence texture. And straight away we got a pretty good result. Obviously the scaling is going to be dependent on your scene and object size. Where in part one we used a minus texture value, so the time offsets followed behind the initial animation, in this instance, aha, we're going to use a positive number. 
and that'll mean the start point of the loop happens further down the timeline. I'm not sure if that made any sense, but definitely play around and see, <laughs> see what I'm talking about. So that's already pretty good. And remember, we can also play with the time scale as well. So let's just add again, a turbulence. Slightly harder to read sometimes, the uh, time scale, but it's definitely worth playing around with. As an addition, let's say we want to smooth that morph out even more. So we can go to the crown layer and let's duplicate it. I've got quick clone set to a keyboard shortcut here. Unfortunately, you can't rename it, but I want this to be my second frame. So let's move that into position under crown one. Let's go to the morph and let's say a value of 50%. Okay, just check the envelope. There's no animation on that. That's good. And let's expand the dope sheet. Select these and knock them one frame back. And as you can see, we now have a slightly smoother animation. Final example, let's apply all of this to an object, this time with an MDD applied to it. To help workflow, I will be using a couple of plugins, but I'll point them out as we're going along. We'll also be using a very simple nodal setup. So the tube is selected. Again, we'll go to sequence. P for properties on the keyboard. Just to make it clearer, let's remove all of these because we don't need those, but we will add a nodal displacement. Open that up. The first change is, and I'm not sure why, under displacement, double click. This seemed to work better in local coordinates. So that's our first move. Close that down. Next move is to apply the MDD to this object. Now I'm gonna use the native one for this. So open up the displacement node and I've linked it to the tube MDD file here. And then obviously displacement into the displacement input. Here we have a very simple tube that just jumps from one end to the other. So it looks like this tube is 24 frames long. Now the trick here will be to split out each of these 24 frames into non-animated static layers. Okay, so buckle up, double click on the displacement and we want to click on this mapped time on option. I'm working at 25 frames a second and each of these is a frame long. So that's basically one second divided by 25. So each of these frames is 0.04. So 0.04 will be frame one, 0 0.082, 0 0.163 and so on. But when I clone the object, I don't want to be manually entering that number each time. So let's introduce a couple of nodes to help us out. This first third party node that I'm going to use is part of the DB and W toolkit, an invaluable suite of tools for like three dollars. So head on over to their Patreon site. I'll leave the link in the description. It's well worth it. The node we're looking for is the extended spot info. We're now going to get a multiply node. Under B, we're going to stick our frame, which is 0 0.4. And we're going to multiply that with the clone index. Double click on the MDD displacement and make sure this mapped time on is still clicked. And then we're going to take the result from the multiply into the time. We don't quite get what we want yet because there's no clones, so there's no clone index. But that's all about to change. So let's close this down and select the tube and let's clone, which is control C. Let's clone that 23 times, so there's 24 in total. Just re-click on the sequence just to check they're in order, which sometimes clearly they aren't. There we go, that's better. Now the first issue is I found a bug in that. Let's bring the properties up, double click on this. On the clones, the MDD, for some reason the mapped on time is unclicked on the cloned objects, but there's a quick fix to that. Select tube one, which is where we did all the setup. Again, press P for properties. Right mouse click and copy. Select all the other tubes. Select the top one, go all the way to the bottom. Select the shift click to the bottom. Right mouse click and paste into. Not sure why it lost the link to the MDD, but it's a quick one just to locate the file and click yes. What we have now is 24 frames of that MDD all isolated in time. So there's no animation on those whatsoever. That's all fixed, so let's unite all of these objects under a single null. We'll turn off parent in place so we're not creating any new keyframes. 
Select all the tubes, control space and light wave create group. Let's just call it tube. So that's all good. Let's move to frame one and let's sort out the scaling for each. So again, making sure the tubes are selected. Frame one, we want the scale to be at one. At frame zero, we want to be at zero. And we also want them to be zero on frame two. I'm also going to pause it briefly at the end of the loop. So I'm going to put a zero scale at frame 50 as well. Press F2 to bring up the graph editor. Now let's filter out the scales. Select all of the scale channels. Incoming curve will select stepped. And as a post behavior, we also want to repeat. Excellent. So frame zero, frame one, frame two and then that repeats again at frame 50. We need to offset these by a frame each. We could do this manually like I showed earlier, or we could use this fabulous script called Shift Keys Plus by Ernest Chan. It does many, many, many things with keyframes, but for this, we'll select the tube at the top and then the last tube. And now we wanna make sure the time slide is at none and we just wanna hit stagger. And there you go, it's as simple as that. Even if you wanted to use this at its basic level, which is just shifting keyframes about, then this will save you a lot of time. Link again is in the description below. So we're nearly there. Let's turn these off and turn it off from the renderer. Uh, let's create a new null and call it instances. Let's add an instance generator. Add object, which will be our tube. And we want the hierarchy button selected and we want to see them. Uh, let's try radial array for this one. Let's get a rotation. Let's call it, let's go to the rim option. So it spreads them all out. Okay, so that's pretty nice. Close down these windows to get a bit of performance back. And let's get some time offsets in there. So T for the textures. Again, we're gonna go for the procedural texture and that of turbulence. Um, let's make it a minus number for this so it trails behind the original loop. Again, your scale will depend on your size of objects. This is quite nice, but if you wanted this slightly quicker, let's go to sequence mode. manually on this occasion. Hmm, <laughs> so it's quite fun. So that's essentially it. Time offsets with an MDD file. Now you notice there is a slight bug here, which I have reported. There's a problem with the scale. But what I found if you nudge positions around, you'll find a point where you don't actually see them. But generally, it looks great. If the developers are watching, it would be great if this was built in and we didn't have to use this workaround. So there you go, some time offsetting tricks with the instance generator. I hope you found it of use.